Hey, everybody. I'm Pastor Goodman, and this is the Drive to School Podcast. My good friend, Pastor Matt Richard, is back with us today. How are you doing, man? Good. It's good to see you, Harrison. You too. Uh, as we record this, uh, it is Ash Wednesday. You won't hear this until a few days later, but it's Lent now. So um, I, I guess there's some Lent themes we could probably talk about, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, uh, you know, Ash Wednesday kind of kicks us off. And, you know, every, every time I think about Ash Wednesday, I just think about dust, right? And uh, this is the whole theme of Joel. Uh, dust we will come, dust will return, uh, that we're dusty people that uh, communicates our mortality, if you will. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's uh, definitely a sorrow for sin, you know, sorrow for uh, the condition that we are uh, being poisoned by by this uh, original sin. Yeah, because we, we don't just take this the way the world does, that everything breaks sooner or later, that entropy is a thing. Uh, but we, we can actually look and see the cause of it. Uh, it. It's not just that everything that, that we have in this world is going to fall apart and even we are going to die, but it's that we did that. Uh, if, if we go all the way back, the, the commandments that God gives us, they point to why this is happening, and it's my fault. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's well, the, the confessions talk about this a lot. The, 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 our Lutheran confessions, they talk about this, that uh, you know we need the Holy Word of God to, to reveal this. I mean, so we, we, we get it that things break in this world. You know, we get it that things fall apart. Um, we even, if we're really honest with ourselves, we get it that, that there's part of us uh, that just does not want to do righteousness, does not want to do good things, and often wants to do the very opposite of what we hope to do. And, uh, you know, there's great courage uh, in actually... Uh, calling it what it is and admitting what it is. And the confessions talk about how the Holy Scripture has to really re reveal that to us. And so it's not like it's earth shattering news to us that we have the sinful nature, that uh, we have the struggle with uh, sin, that we live in a world of uh, what we call the veil of tears, a, a world that is clothed in tears and sorrow and so forth. It's no surprise, but yet at the same time, there's part of us that's actively denying that, trying to pretend like it's almost like it's almost like covering your eyes, pretend like it doesn't exist. And yet we read the scriptures and we hear all the way back to the very beginning, man, that that uh, things were really messed up in Genesis three. And we see throughout all the Old Testament, we see all the failings of humanity all the way through. Right. And so when we talk then about sorrow, uh, it, it's it's easy to sort of leave it there that Lent just wants us to be sad. Um, but it's not just sad so much as honesty that, that we're driving towards right now. Right. Because like you said, there's this part that wants to deny that it's real and deny that it's my fault. And so we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, you know, I, I think I, I think sometimes us Lutherans and uh, can get really get the uh, bad rap from, you know, other people that you know Lent is just it's just this dreary time where you got to hang your head low and uh, you know just be be sad, right? You know, just sad all the time. Um, I would say that there's a difference between being sad, right, and being realistic, like you mentioned, they're realistic about who we are. Um, I, I, Paul, Paul says it this way, and, I, and I, I've been really gripped by this lately. Uh, the Apostle Paul in the New Testament, he always talks about being sober, right, being alert, mm -hmm. being in the moment. And if you think about this, not, not necessarily, you know, physically sober, he's not necessarily talking about being, don't be drunk, even though we say we don't want to be drunk. Uh, but he's saying to be sober in the moment, that means to be awake, not to be, uh, not to be numbed by the things of this world. And there's this daily grind that we live in that we just kind of go day in and day out and we have our routines and so forth that we can kind of become numb to the reality of sin itself, numb to the reality that we're mortal beings, that we're going to die someday. In fact, then what happens is we end up going to a funeral, uh, a loved one passes, so we go to a funeral and then we walk into that church, we see the casket and then guess what happens? Boom, it hits us. And it knocks us out of our, our drunken stupor of, 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 of uh, numbness of this life. And it sobers us up to the reality that we're mortal beings. And I think, I think it's the reason why people many times they really struggle and they hate funerals is because it, it hits a core. It hits the very core of who we are, that we're mortal beings. And that's what, that's what Lent is, is to, to, to remind us um, that we came from dust, we'll return to dust, and that uh, that we are sinners in thought, word, and deed, and that uh, we will not live forever, that there is a consequence to sin in this world, um, that uh, we are fallen, that we do fall short of the Ten Commandments. It's a sobering moment. I would say that Lent, more than anything else, is a time for us to sober up. But why? That's the question. Why, why, why are we to be sober during this season of Lent? Why are we to contemplate our mortality? Why are we to contemplate all of this sin? And the answer is Easter's around the corner. You know, Easter's right around the corner. It has to be. And that's one of those confrontations that, that we sort of have out there that numb feels pretty good. 
numb feels way better than pain. Numb feels way better than heartache. And, and so this, this idea of being, being sober, of, of not feeling numb, of, of actually feeling the pains around us, that, that sounds terrible. Um, and the reality is if, if it's just to sort of leave you feeling worse than you did before, uh, then you've missed the whole point. Uh, but if, if there can actually be something better than numb, and that's actually the, the goal here, if there can be resurrection, if there can be hope, then, then that's what we want to be driven towards. And that's not a thing that we're just going to snap out of ourselves and realize because numb just feels better than pain, but we, we preach Lent so that we can preach Easter. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I actually, um, I really, really enjoy the seasonal Lent and because of the anticipation of Easter, but I do know like uh, at St. Paul's, you know, we have tonight, uh, we have a fish fry, which is going to be awesome. I, I love mm -hmm. our fish fry. We have some good cooks. The guys are going to be cooking fish tonight. So we get to eat some good walleye and so forth. So good fish fry tonight. But then we enter into Ash Wednesday service and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a sobering punch in the gut. And then the next several weeks, we're going to be focusing on the Psalms and suffering in the Psalms and so forth. And then with our divine services on Sundays, then the, everything's being taken away. So the Alleluia's, our little kids take our Alleluia's and they put them in a little box and they seal the box. So the Alleluia's, we say goodbye to the Alleluia's, they go in the box and then we pull things away from their service. So we get to a uh, Holy Week on Holy Thursday and the altar is stripped. And then Good Friday, we, we it's even more stripped. And then and then Saturday, it's just, it's just it, everything's being taken away. And then all of a sudden on Sunday, on Sunday, I know at St. Paul's, you come in, the lights go on, we have trumpets in the balcony, they play it, the organ volume is cranked up, and not not that we're all into dramatics, but the reason why we're doing that is because we had to hear the, go the gospel that he is risen, he's risen yeah, indeed, yeah. hallelujah, and so that's our hope, the, so everything that we cover through the season of Lent is answered in that cross, and that resurrection, mm -hmm. uh, it is all addressed there. And so the, the big solution to Lent is going to be that uh, big, big, bold proclamation, the tomb is empty in Easter. And so in a lot of ways, we we Lutherans and we as Christians, uh, we can be honest with ourselves and go deeply into Lent and to contemplate those things soberly because we have an out, if you will, right. a, a, a way, a solution that we know is coming which is easter so we can have that bold courage to look soberly at ourselves soberly at the world uh soberly um at the reality of our sin and death uh ultimately knowing in the back of our mind we have that solution coming amen so uh when we when we confront sorrow this season uh it, it's not simply to to recognize that we ought to feel bad about ourselves and the things we've done but it's to recognize that there's more yeah yeah, I, again, it's it's not you know it's not sorrow is not measured by the amount of CCs that we cry, right? How many tears, you know? Uh, it's also not how low you hold your head. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorrow is is regret and and uh, sorrow for the reality of sin, and we can say, I'm sorry that Adam and Eve, you know, ate of that forbidden fruit, did not trust God's word. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I sinned and thought we're indeed. I'm sorry that our world. Is, is, is plunged into darkness. I'm sorry that my neighbor does not see the gospel and struggles and, and, and is, is muddling through this life. Uh, sorrow for all that. And it leads us to say, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. Come, Lord Jesus. Uh, please come. Uh, deliver the gospel to us. Give us comfort in the midst of our grief, comfort in the midst of our sorrow, assurance in the midst of our sorrow, uh, knowing that this veil of tears is only a moment. And then in the twinkling of an eye, we will be resurrected unto life everlasting, where this will all be, what, the past. Amen. Pastor, thanks so much for being here. Good to see you, Harrison. Take care, my friend. Blessed Lent. You too.